In this video, we'll learn about the difference between object literals and class template objects in P5.js. You may already be familiar with a technique for defining variables, like we see in the example here, where we've got one variable name, and then inside of curly brackets, a bunch of properties or fields that we're assigning to that variable. The technical term for this type of variable is an object literal. And this is a great technique for keeping our code organized and getting a little bit of encapsulation. So that is when we are building in formal relationships to our code that help to match the behaviors that we'd like to see on screen. Let's go ahead and play this example here. And you can see I'm using my object literal called I to help me create these shapes on the screen. So using an object literal is great for when we want one instance of something, but let's say I wanted more of these eyeball shapes on the screen. Now it might make sense to simply make a copy of this initial object literal variable. So let's see if we can get that to work. Down here in setup, I'll just make one called i2, and I'll try to copy in the object literal that I've defined at the top of my code. And then maybe I want to start to give this a different location. So I'll use this dot syntax to access that property. And I'll set the X location to my second I at 300 and same for Y. Now I can already start to see I've got some issues here. The changes that I'm making are actually being applied to the first I that was already in my code. And that's actually JavaScript doing what it's supposed to do. It's just not leading to the behavior that we want. Uh, so when I make this second I variable, I'm referencing the first one. So any changes I make to that are flowing back to this object literal that I have at the top of my code. So this isn't exactly what I want. And this gets to one of the limitations of object literals is that it's not really good for making duplicate objects that have independent properties and independent behaviors. So let's contrast this to a different example. And in this sketch, we're taking a similar approach, but instead of using an object literal, we're using a class template. So down at the bottom of my code, I've got this class block, and this is doing a similar thing to the object literal definition we saw in the previous sketch, just using a little bit of different syntax. And it's this syntax, it's this constructor function, uh, and this other look at method that are gonna let us easily make duplicates of these eyeball objects that operate independently from one another. So we can already see that here, I've got two copies, and my code is set up so that I can click and make additional copies. You can see each of these groups of circles has similar but not identical properties to them. Now in this video, we're not gonna to get too much into detail about the specific syntax that we need to set up a class template object in P5. We'll cover that in a different video. For now, we just wanna talk about the difference between these two approaches to defining objects in our code. And so I love food, so I always find it helpful to use a food metaphor and we can think back to our object literals and think of those like individual cookies. So these are great for single instance uses. When I want one cookie, I can go out and get say a chocolate chip cookie, but I can't easily change that cookie to say an oatmeal cookie once I've bought it. On a similar note, class templates are like cookie cutters. So these are great when we want lots of similar duplicates. And we could think of our class template definition analogous to a cookie cutter, say one for a gingerbread person like we see below. Now we could use that as a template to make lots of similarly shaped cookies, maybe that each get treated differently uh, with icing or get cut out of different flavors of dough, for example. So that's just a quick overview of the difference between object literals and class template objects in P5.js.